the Spirit sent Jesus out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. Hello everyone and welcome to our service for Ash Wednesday. On this first day of Lent we remember our own waywardness and mortality. We heed Christ's call to repentance and receive the gift of his forgiveness. And we commit ourselves to him afresh as his followers and his friends. A little later in the service there'll be an opportunity to sign ourselves with the sign of his cross and if you want to use ash for that purpose then now might be the time to pause and uh, prepare. We pray now for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our reading is taken from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, part of the Sermon on the Mount, and we begin at the first verse. Jesus said to his disciples, Be careful not to practice your righteousness 
in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So, when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. When you fast, do not look sombre as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is unseen, and your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For us at this time, there's something a bit ironic about hearing Jesus's admonition not to make a public show of our piety. Lockdown this time has not involved the prohibition of public worship. Nevertheless, at St Oswald's, like many other churches, Concerns for safety have led us to suspend services in church, as uh, you're no doubt aware. Prayer and worship at home are the order of the day for the moment. Another irony is, of course, that whereas in Jesus' day, engaging in a public display of religious devotion uh, would win you social esteem, today you're more likely to be thought mm, a bit odd. Christian witness may actually cause to uh, dent your reputation. In any case, going public with our faith uh, is not in itself a bad thing. It depends on our motivation, and it's that motivation with which Jesus is concerned in our Gospel passage. What Jesus was having a go at was using religion for self-promotion. That doesn't mean keeping our faith purely private. 
Indeed, we're called to witness as part of our Christian discipleship. Uh, and as I mentioned uh, a couple of weeks ago now, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury's Lent book for this year is an encouragement to uh, Christian witness, Living His Story by Hannah Steele. And it's not too late to order it from uh, one of the uh, online bookshops. Earlier in the Sermon on the Mount, from which our passage is taken, Jesus has actually told his disciples, Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We are called to witness not to the supposed quality of our spirituality, but to the God who inspires us. And as St Paul indicates, there is a public and a private aspect to Christian faith, and both are important. St Paul says in the letter to the Romans, If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus' words in our passage today uh, prompt us to consider the private side of faith, the side of our lives uh, which uh, few, if any, see uh, but God alone, our hidden desires and motivations. And Lent is a good time to ask ourselves questions. Who am I really when no one else is around? Is my outer life in tune with my inner life and vice versa? Am I moving towards a greater integrity or am I simply pretending to be a good Christian? But those are questions to ask ourselves in the company of the God who knows us better than we can ever know ourselves, who is no celestial snooper eager to catch us out and call us to account, but rather the God of compassion and tenderness who longs to deepen a relationship in which we as his children grow to reflect his nature more and more. A lockdown Lent can be an opportunity for such questioning as we follow Jesus' injunction to go into a, a private room, whether literally or metaphorically, to close the door and to pray to our Heavenly Father who sees in secret. For some I realise that lockdown has brought a whole load of new responsibilities and left us with less time to spare. In brief moments, we can simply offer to God our activities and uh, our busyness and to pray for his strength and help. For others, though, we have been gifted with a fresh opportunity for more prolonged times of prayer and reflection. That can be demanding it can require a certain amount of discipline, but it is immeasurably worthwhile. Either way, the reward for reaching out to God is a deeper relationship with our Heavenly Father, for God himself is his own reward. <laughs>
I invite you now to make on your forehead the sign of the cross. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin, and be faithful to Christ. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. So let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and in faith. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God our Father forgive you your sins, and bring you to the eternal joy of his kingdom, where dust and ashes have no dominion. In penitence and faith, we now offer our intercessions to our Heavenly Father. For your holy people, that they may triumph over evil and grow in grace, we pray to you, O Lord. In your mercy, hear us. For the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in the ways of mercy and of truth. We pray to you, O Lord. In your mercy, hear us. For the needy, that they may not be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. We pray to you, O Lord. In your mercy, hear us. For the sick in body, mind and spirit, that they may know your power to heal, we pray to you, O Lord. In your mercy, hear us. For the poor in spirit, that they may inherit the kingdom of God and see you face to face, we pray to you, O Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Let us commend the world for which Christ suffered to the mercy and protection of God. As we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.